Friend, this nation needs a move of the Spirit, amen? It needs for the, for the, for the generals to rise again, for the men and women of God that carry the anointing, not to be shy and hold back, but to be bold and, and to speak the Word of God with, a, with passion and with authority. There's something about the anointing. There's something about uh, understanding that we are carriers of something so dynamic. We're, we're looking at the way that the flu, you know, whatever it is, people are trying to get vaccinated by it and goodness knows what, but that flu thing is spreading so fast and touching people. I want the Holy Ghost people to be just as contagious as that, amen. Even more contagious than that, that we touch people and they'll get um, amazingly set free. Amazingly set free. I want to speak this, this morning about what defines old age. <laughs> you know, when you're looking at your toenails and they're starting to turn up and, uh, and bunions and goodness knows what else and you look at yourself in the mirror and you, everything seems to have gone south. <laughs> and you look at yourself and you, th- and, and you know you know that the call of God's upon your life and you know that that we're not here just to, to play tiddlywinks, but we're here to, to carry on and, and to manifest the presence of God. And so I just started to think a little bit about what defines old age. And this is what I, what I felt. When a man or a woman no longer has a vision or a purpose, they enter into old age. And I don't care today whether you're 90 or 100 years of age. If, you, if you've got a vision and a purpose, you're not old. If you've got something on the inside of you, it'll take you through. And, and, you know, I don't want to enter into old age. I want to die young. You know, this, this thing can start as early as 40. And I know some, some young people today that have already started on that journey of old age. And they die very, very young. See, when they, I, I believe that we're never, ever too old uh, to dream dreams. I believe that uh, we're never, never, ever too old or too young to dream a dream of greatness. I, I never believe that we're too old to plan ventures, to invent, to build, to conquer. I don't know about, about you, but we are designed to conquer. Every human, when, when we were created, God gave us the ability, he said, go into all the world and conquer. Go in and, and, and take dominion, have authority. You know that God's word has never changed? We talk about the first, uh, first mention of something. We were created to conquer. Yes, right. We were created to rule and reign. We were not cre- created to cringe. We're not created to act like as if we're, we're second best, but God created us like Himself. And He put His same Spirit on the inside of us. And we're created to overcome and to triumph over everything. But many times if we don't understand that, we will cringe from the enemy. We will allow his words to assert over us and to pull us down. But I want to tell you, there's a generation, there's a a company of people, doesn't matter how old you are, that's beginning to rise up. There's something on the inside that's greater and bigger than anything else. And I believe that we're never ever too young or old to dream to plan great ventures, to invent, to build, to conquer. The zeal of the Lord, the zeal of God has consumed me. It's burning in my soul. Friend, I wanna tell you, we've gotta have something that starts to burn on the inside. Something there that that stirs the juices on the inside of us that says, God, we're not just gonna passively sit by and watch our youth go get uh, handed over to crack or this ice or whatever they call it. We're not just going to sit by and passively watch uh, these farmers and different things. We, we'll do whatever we can. We're going to raise up a standard against the work of the enemy. But friend, I want to tell you, bad things happen to good people when good people do nothing about it. And I believe that there's something that's got to rise up and it's a, and it's a zeal of God. The zeal of God that we can only, you, you won't catch it watching television. You won't catch it eating cornflakes. But I want to tell you, you'll catch it as you enter into the presence of God. As you lift up your hands and begin to worship and begin to praise. As you open up your heart to something there and allow God to come on in, on the inside again. And all of a sudden we'll get a vision where, where something will be birthed on the inside of us. We, we will we'll become pregnant with, with the vision of God, that God's vision is that none would perish, that everyone, every man, woman and child would have an opportunity to triumph and overcome and be somebody. God doesn't want people to be destroyed and, and broken and hurt 
And what an amazing God we serve. The zeal of God has consumed me. It burns within my soul. In, in my soul. You see, I believe that dreamers uh, build and shape society. People with a dream. I, I, I'm amazed. I was watching something on a documentary the other day and there was this young man. He's very, very young, but he's created these, these, these uh, uh, it's, it's in, the, in the area of science and he's, and he's got something there that will overcome. They believe it's the beginning of, of, of wiping out cancer on this planet. A young man who looked like about 19 or 20 years of age but you see, something got inside of him. He got a zeal. And, and he got there in front of these little test tubes and goodness knows what, but he started to work on it. And he started to work and he continued to work and he tried many, many tests and he, he did all this sort of things and eventually he found something there that started to work. Friend, if we just sit back passively and, and just pray and, and don't do anything about it, nothing will happen. But if we get up off our blessed assurance and start saying, my God, I, I, want, to, I want more, I want something more inside of me. There's a man of old and, and Martin Luther, he had a dream. And that dream inside of him, when he spoke that dream, it was nothing like his dream because the, the nation was in a mess. The, 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 the colored and goodness knows what else, it was just in a mess. But this man stood up and, and because of the zeal of God that was on the inside of him. And he said, I have a dream. And as he spoke those words, it wasn't just words, but because of that passion, he carried an anointing. He carried a mantle. He carried something. And friend, I wanna tell you today that each and every one of us carries something that is more powerful and more dynamic than you will ever understand. And you'll never really know what it is until you stand in that place and you start to declare something that the Holy Ghost comes upon you and the Spirit of God can consume you. And as you start to speak it out, it starts to break open something and chains begin to fall off and things start to open up. And as this man spoke those words, even though they assassinated him later on, those words still live on today. And those words went in there and started to attack the enemy's strongholds and started to break down the stronghold that was in that nation. And today that nation is free because of that. I pray today that we would start to get that tenacity on the inside of us, that we would speak the Word of God with boldness and with authority. Caleb had a different spirit. It says in Numbers 14, 24, I'll just read this to you. But my servant Caleb, because he had a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring him into the land where he went and his sentence shall inherit it. Friend, I want to tell you, we have been baptized. I have a different spirit. Do you have a different spirit today? Do you have a different spirit to the world spirit? Do you have a different spirit to those things that, that are carrying on in the world? Have you got a, a passion, as our brother was saying today, not for the things of this world, but for the things of God that God can give to us that are more beautiful and more powerful and more passionate than anything else you'll ever, ever have? Amen. What is if a man should gain the whole world and lose his soul? What is it if we should build a barn? There's a man there that had so much money that he said, I'm gonna, oh, I'm so good, I'm so powerful, I'm so amazing, I'm gonna build more barns and I'm gonna do this. And the Spirit of God says, you fool, tonight your life is required of you. Somebody said to me once about two, I think three of the wealthiest men in the world died within a short period of time and they were discussing and they were saying to each other, I wonder how much they left. I wonder how much they left. And it was all about how much money they'd accumulated. I wonder how much they left. And one guy said, I know how much, the lot. <laughs> the lot. <laughs> Can't take any with you, amen. Told you many times about the guy that wanted to take a bit of gold up with him. I said, why would you want to take pavement up to heaven? <laughs> what defines old age? When we no longer have a vision or a purpose, we enter into this thing called old age. <laughs> I believe attitudes is, is very, very important. An attitude to live. Caleb had a born to win attitude. Some people might call it other things, but I just call it God-given tenacity, amen? God-given vision, an attitude that couldn't be quenched or discouraged or conquered, an attitude that couldn't be defeated. Can you imagine him as he, as he would have, you know, been in, in the presence of God and listened to the voice of God and God was saying to you, I'm gonna deliver you out of this bondage that you're in? I'm gonna take you to a promised land where the land is flowing with milk and honey. 
I'm going to take you to this wonderful place. I would imagine that in his heart and, and in his mind, he was thinking how wonderful this is going to be. He would have dreamed about, about all this, the, you know, the, how good it would be to be set free from the bondage of the taskmasters. But I want to tell you, there are many people that sit in churches today that are still bound by taskmasters that God has delivered you 2,000 years ago. Still delivered by oppressions and, and things that, that we should be set free from by now. And this man of God, he would have been there. He would have been thinking, man, this is going to be amazing to enter into this amazing place. This place is flowing with milk and honey and all these things that, that God has promised us. And he knows there that they sent the spies in. And as they went in, he was one of the spies. And as he would have gone into this nation, and as he would have seen all the things there and, and all the fruit there, it took two men to carry a bunch of grapes. It talked about the, the fruit of the land and everything that God had promised. Here it was. It was all there. And can you imagine when they came back and, and they were all ready and they, they started to bring their report and 10 of the spies, they started to say, we can't go in. We can't go in. We can't go in because of the inhabitants of the land. We can't go in and take this land. They're too big for us. There's giants. There's fortified cities. There's all these things. Friend, I want to tell you today, between you and your dream, there are fortified cities. There are giants that stand in front of you. There are negative thoughts. There are negative people that will get around your life. But I want to tell you, you've got to have the tenacity that, that Caleb had. You've got to have something on the inside of you that says, I'm not going to watch and I'm not going to listen to the giants because I've got a vision and I've got a dream and I've got a plan and I've got a promise from God. He said, I'm going to go into the promised land, a land that's flowing with milk and honey, and I'm going in there. Friend, I want to tell you today, there's people that need healing and God has already promised you healing and He's already delivered you right now. So many, many years ago, friend, you've got to push through the negatives. You've got to push through the doctor's reports. You've got to push through the negative people that get around your life and you've got to grab hold of the promises of God and you grab hold of it with that same tenacity and you say, it is mine. No devil in hell is going to steal it from me. Caleb had a different spirit. I thank God that I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, a different spirit, amen? How many people here have got a different spirit inside you? Spirits that says, I'm gonna conquer. I'm gonna win, I'm gonna overcome, I'm gonna triumph. Had a born again attitude, an attitude that couldn't be quenched, couldn't be discouraged and couldn't be conquered. This is what the church has gotta to have today. We have to have it today. In today's world, Friend, I don't know, I've been around for a little while, but this world is totally confused right now. They don't know whether marriage is this way or that way, we're boys or girls or goodness or us what. Friend, we've got to be filled with the certainty of the call of God on our lives. We live in this, on this planet today for one reason and one reason only. That's to show forth the glory of God. To be His witnesses, to be His witness. That's all we're here for. We must be filled with the certainty of the call of God. Caleb was filled with something that the others obviously didn't have. And we've also got to have a consciousness of the awesome, overshadowing, ever-present, supernatural hand of God on our lives. Girls, you've got to understand that when you go out there, you don't go alone. You are overshadowed by the supernatural hand of God that will go before you. As you lay hands on somebody, He will lay hands on that person. As you speak, He will say, Amen. But if you speak His word, Amen. amen. <laughs> I believe that God's going to do good things for you. I believe God will do that. We've got to have a certainty of His call. We've got to be conscious of the awesome, overshadowing, ever-present, supernatural hand of God. The Apostle Paul said it this way, and I'd like to read from uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 35. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? 
As it is written, for your sakes we are killed all day long and we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I want you to repeat that with me right now. I'm just gonna say, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Let's do it one more time. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am persuaded. Friend, are you persuaded today? Are you persuaded today that God has got you in His hand? Are you persuaded today if God before you, who can be again you? Are you persuaded today that God is, is over and triumphs over everything that comes against you? For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Then he goes on and says, I tell the truth in Christ. I am not lying. (laughs) My conscience is also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. In other words, he's saying, I'm not just trying to lead you up a garden path. I'm not putting you up a tree so I can chop it down. I'm telling you the truth. And not only am I telling you the truth, but while I'm speaking to you, the Holy Ghost is confirming what what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit is, is encouraging me. The Holy Spirit, I want to tell you, friends, the Holy Spirit is encouraging me to, to say, come on, church, let's rise up again. Let's go again. Let's push through. Let's see what we can do. Because I believe that God's got some amazing things. We're living in a day that nobody else has ever lived in. We're living in a time of, of creation that I believe is so unique to, to society. I believe that all these things that are happening right around us today, there's, there's talking about that America's going to devalue the dollar. They say that this is happening, that's happening. I want to tell you, this world is in, in, in full chaos. Because it's what our brother was talking about. If our hope is in our finances, if our hope is in, our, in, in currency, we are doomed but our hope is in Him. Amen? Our hope is in Him. Our hope is not in, and I, and I believe that that's one of the reasons that, that God brought tithing into, in, into existence to, to say, who are you gonna trust? <laughs> it's, it's not a, you know, one of the amazing things, one day I was talking about, thinking about God and I'm talking about money and I'm, I, was, I was a bit short and I'm thinking, my God, and, and He says, I don't want your money. I don't need your money. He said, I don't even have any up here. (laughs) No money. He doesn't need our money. He just needs our obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. He just wants to see your heart, see where where, where we trust. And it's got... God can cause the very stones to, to cry out and worship Him. All these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. Do you believe that today? We admire great men and women of God, people who uh, have achieved much in God and led many uh, thousands to Christ. Uh, Reinhard Bonnke is one of these people. He had an attitude. And this is a statement that he made. He said, Christians are not the hunted, but the hunters. I like that, amen. Not the attacked, but the attackers. See, if you, if you just think we're always under attack, well, glory to God, you're gonna get attacked. But I wanna tell you, it's time for the church to rise up and the way that we can do it is in prayer, where we can go out and attack the works of the enemy, where we can plead the blood of Jesus. We, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. The walls are coming down with a shout of praise. There's something that's gonna happen in the realm of the spirit before it will happen in the natural. And the church as it rises up in prayer and begins to speak out and declare the things of God, that the crack in the enemy's armor, that the walls will start to crack and they'll start to open up and the avalanche of God's power and presence will touch this country and this nation of the world like never before. But we, the people of God, have got to rise up. We've got to, we've got to stand our ground. We've got to, it's no good just talking about it. I am not the hunted, I am the hunter, amen. I am not the attacked, but I am the attacker. 
We are God's storm troopers, hallelujah, amen. How many people want to st- sign up to be part of God's sign, a storm troopers, amen. Sent to release the hostages of hell. We are the invading forces of the Lord, amen. We draw strength from our heroes who've gone before us, broke through the enemy's lines, smashed. Reinhard Bonnke went into Africa. Amazing miracles. But that just doesn't happen because one day you just say, I'm just gonna go to Africa and have a meeting. No, somewhere along the line, a bunch of people broke through. And they opened up that avalanche called the avalanche of anointing. And the anointing came down and the presence of God came down and literally thousands upon thousands, hundreds of thousands of people gave their life to Christ. People were just miraculously healed. Wheelchairs and, 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 and crutches and things like that were just left at the altar as people ran home and as they ran home in victory. I wanna tell you friends, there's something in the Holy Ghost that's worth going after. It's worth fighting for, amen. The church has sort of slipped back into some sort of an existence or whatever it might be that we call the church today. But I wanna tell you the church that God wants is a church triumphant, a church victorious, ruling and reigning with Christ, amen. A people there that have overcome, that that, that have a confidence, that have an assurance. I am persuaded there's, no, there's nothing can separate me from the love of God. There's nothing that can separate us from the things that God has, has wanted for us, amen, that God has prepared for us. But we've got to push through, we've got to break through because there's been this glass ceiling. We heard about the fleas that, that they put them into a, into a, a, a shallow dish but put a, a piece of that uh, cellophane, that clear plastic over the top. And the, and the fleas keep jumping up and hitting their head on that thing and all of a sudden they stop jumping. They take the cellophane off it and the fleas still don't jump out. Because they've learned. And I wanna tell you, church, we've learned to sit back and cop the, the rubbish. I was gonna say another word, but I won't. <laughs> From the devil, amen. <laughs> Sometimes it pays to shock ourselves out of something, amen. But we've, we've, we've sort of, now we don't jump anymore. Now we don't we don't believe anymore we don't do this because we've jumped and we've hit our head and we've we've no friend I want to tell you if God can raise up an army if we can continue to grow and develop and 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 punch through I want to tell you God's going to punch a hole through that thing and we're going to see the abundance of God flow through I'm not moved by what I see I'm not I'm moved by what I know I'm moved by by what I know I know Jesus heals I've seen the times when, when we've seen the, the miraculous miracle power of God in operation. And I don't believe that God's on, on holiday. I believe God's the same, but it's the church that's got to come back. I remember laying my hand on a man that had, had a heart condition. The doctor said he only had a few weeks to live. He'd gone away on a holiday and he couldn't even walk five or cent, 10 feet before he almost collapsed. But he came to our church meeting one night and somehow or other he got himself out on the altar We'd had a word of knowledge or something. And I put my hand on his chest and I prayed some funny little prayer, most probably. Would have been, be healed. (laughs) When I had David Ironside with me, he used to come behind me and say, in Jesus' name, just to make sure the prayer was right. (laughs) But that man told me some time later, he said, Neil, he said, the moment your hand touched my chest, the pain left. And I was totally healed. He lived for years and years and years and years. But is there any, no, it's not that. It's what God says, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And if you're bold enough and game enough and silly enough to believe it, it'll work, amen? God needs some people that'll do some things. But God's storm, storm troopers sent to release people. Broke through, people that have broken through the enemy's lines and received the promise of God. I, I, I want, how many people want the promise of God over your life? I want the promise of God. Caleb was one that, uh, that we can use as an example of one who had a God-given attitude or tenacity and an unshakable belief in what God had promised he also could deliver. What God had promised he could also deliver. 
Not what Neil says or what somebody else says. It's what God says in His Word. God says, by my stripes you are healed. God says, I'm going to pour out my Spirit. See, He had a different attitude to the ten spies who melted when fear, with fear when they saw the giants in the land. Friend, we can be surrounded by people that will fear. But I want to tell you, friends, we're also surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Men and women that have gone before, men and women that have, that have broken through. They said we're not able to possess the land. But Caleb said something different. He said, let us go up at once. We are well able. <laughs> uh, look, I can almost see him as, as the people were there. He, he, went, oh, he would have found himself a rock. He was watching these people. He was watching them as they were talking themselves out of the miracle that God wanted to do. God was, had them right there and they were talking themselves out and he stood there and he said, be quiet. Better, make sure I've got teeth in. <laughs> we are well able. Their defense has left them and God is with us, hallelujah. They are bread for us. Man, come on, can we rise our voices? Come on, can we start to shout? Can we start to say we are well able? Can you give the preacher a little bit of encouragement, amen? Come on, we can do it. Poor old, poor old Kayla was there and what they wanted to do was stone him. <laughs> we are well able. Lucky we didn't bring no bottles and those times. Nice we can do this. We, this is ours. The enemy's already departed from them. Friend, I want to tell you today, the greatest victory that has ever been performed on this planet was the day that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, rose again triumphant o'er His foes. I want to tell you, Jesus, the Son of God, made a show of Him openly. He stripped Him of every bit of power. He annihilated Him. He, he, he led Him through the streets. He, he, I want to tell you, He led captivity captive and He made, oh, Rashakabundi, I can't remember what He did. He just did a lot of things. Tend to somebody say he did a lot of things that day. He set me free. He healed my body. He made me whole. He made a way for me. He made a way for me. He made a way for you to walk through, to walk through. To walk through. To walk through and break through, amen. The walls are coming down, friend, with a shout of praise. The walls are coming down, amen. It's a day for walls to come down. You know, he, he had a different attitude to the 10 spies. He, he said, let us go up at once and possess the land for we are well able to overcome it. Friend, there's not one thing in front of you today that you are not well able to overcome. Neither fear the people of the land for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them. And the Lord is with us. You know, Acts 10.38 uh, says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, because God was with him, amen. God came to Gideon, uh, and, and here he is in, in trying to... Put, Cut a, make a little bit of flour so he can make a little bit of a bread or something like that to feed his family. And God came up to him and said, God, God spoke to him and said, Gideon, you mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you, friend. Today, I have to be confident. I have to have an unshakable uh, attitude within me that God is with me, amen. If God be for me, who can be against me? There's nothing here on this planet that the devil can throw in our face that we cannot overcome if we stand tall. When you've done all to stand, stand, amen. Stand when you've done all to stand. Stand. Oh, I think God's a good God, amen. Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Does, the, does this mean that, that Caleb was in a, it was, had sunglasses on or he couldn't see the enemy? 
Does it mean that, that he was in a different place to where the other spies were? No, he saw the enemy. He saw them. He saw everything that, they, that the others saw, but he had a different attitude. He had a different concept. You see, he saw the enemy, but he saw something else. He saw God and he saw the Word of God and he knew that God was able to accomplish and do whatever God said he was able to do. He knew that it was looked impossible to the natural. It, 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 how can we do this? You see, your promises today, your promise, this land was a land that was inhabited. It was ha- inhabited by giants, walled cities, and goodness knows what else. And we stand here today and God has given us this city. God has given us the Sunshine Coast. I believe that. The, the sunshine, sunshine Coast belongs to the Lord, to the church, Amen. This nation, this city needs the move of the Spirit. But right now, it has got so many things going against it. It is inhabited by so many other things. And as we look at our, at our city, and, and let's just look at us as our city, as we look at the situations that's going on with the mosques and with the homosexuals and with the lesbians and with the, the thises and the thats and all those sort of things and all these groups rising up and all these people, that, the drug addicts on the, on the coast, the young people going crazy, the alcohol, the, 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 the what's that other thing that... Ice, goodness knows what. We can be looking here and we can say, my God, look at us, we're just a motley up bunch of old people. Hey, Kashyaka Bundi, I'm not looking at me, I'm looking at you, baby. <laughs> I look at me when I go home in the mirror. <laughs> but right now, I, I can't see me. <laughs> I can only see you. <laughs> but we look at that and, and, the, and the things are, are inhabited, inhabited by all this stuff. But friend, if we look at the things that we, we see, that the habitation, well, well, we'll back away. But if we see the Word of God that says, come on, I've given you the land. This nation belongs to the Lord. This is the great south land of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to move by my Spirit. I'm going to raise up an army. And this nation is going to know Jesus. This city is going to have a move of God. Amen. And we come together and pray and pray like that. I want to tell you, God and the Holy Ghost and the angels and goodness knows what, they'll be saying, Amen. <laughs> And I believe what happened is that God looked down and he saw the 10, but he saw the two. And he said, the 10 won't go in, but the two will. And that's when he made that promise. He said, you'll go in and possess a land. Might be a little while later, longer. 45 years later. 45 years later. 45 years later. I don't know how long ago it was when we first came to the Sunshine Coast. It must be getting close to 45 years. 38 years when God gave us a city and here we are, we're back again. (laughs) We mightn't have gone in the first time, but we're going in the second time, amen? Mightn't have gone in the first time, but we're going in the second time, amen? We're going in, we're going in, we're gonna take it, we're gonna, amen? We're gonna take it. How many people believe we can take it? Not me or you, it's Him, amen? But He's gonna get somebody that, that, that He can go through with. What an amazing Saviour, what an amazing God. He didn't uh, see the giants, the fortified cities. They were just as big to him, but the word God gave them was bigger. He quieted the people. He shut them up. Today we can take this land. I believe that Jesus has won the most amazing victory we could ever have. We've got some people here today that need miracles. How many people believe that we can see miracles today? Some people really need real, real miracles. Sir, would you give me the honor and privilege of praying for you? Would you like to just come and stand out here for a minute? Sis, going into hospital tomorrow, come out here. You got a couple of your, your mates here today. Come, come, just come to your mates. Come on, come on out. Come on, if you know this gentleman. Some of the ladies get around this lady. You see, sir, 
we believe here today. We believe in the resurrection. We believe in the power of God. We believe in the mighty anointing of God. Today we're just going to anoint you with oil. Father, the master physician, I'm asking you right now to reach your hand to touch this man. Cancer, we speak to you in Jesus' name. And we don't ask you, we command you to release this man. Release this man in Jesus Christ's name. Let the healing virtue, the power of God, flood into his body, through his body, in Jesus' name, expelling every bit of the enemy's works. Every, every bit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.